Thanks, Dave, for the introduction, and thanks for having me here today. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about cryopreservation of semen when it comes to the equine industry and what we're actually looking at. So most of the animals in today's world are here from some sort of assisted reproductive technology, whether it's artificial insemination or embryo transfer. They're here because we want to increase the genetic capability that we have. So with that, I kind of want to show you guys just a few of the terms that we use so you can follow along. Cryopreservation is the preservation of cells below the freezing point of water. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Liquid nitrogen is negative 260 degrees. So we're inducing a lot of cold stress onto those cells. We need to be able to protect them somehow. That's where cryoprotectants come into play. A cryoprotectant is made of amino acids, sugars, and buffers, all of which help to protect that cell membrane which is so fragile and needed for later fertilization. But why is this important? Why is cryopreservation something that we need as an industry? For the genetics. Looking at the stallion, you're taken aback by his coat color, his disposition. You may even see him working. Those are all traits which we hold valuable. So it's something that we obviously are wanting to secure and when it comes to their genetics overall. So let me show you through where we're at with what the industry has currently in the way of cryopreservation and where we have the potential to take it. The first option is something called vertical mist. It's fast, it has no electricity, and you're ready to store in the same device in which you're freezing. Looking at this device, however, you can see that it's relatively transportable. Okay, I'll give you that. It doesn't have electricity, but you're also, by the way of you're freezing it, you're inducing a lot of cold stress at an uncontrollable rate. That's something that damages those cells. And by us not being able to control it, ultimately, we don't have a good result. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got something called a controlled rate freezer. And this freezer is considered the gold standard of the industry. It freezes your species according to a predetermined rate, and it also has less cell damage overall. Great attributes. The downside, it's pretty bulky. You've got to have a really large liquid nitrogen ink hooked up to it so it can pulsate through the entire time. It has to be stored in a relatively clean environment. It's not really field applicable. You can't take this out to the barn and use it in a barn. On average, it runs about $22,000, and it uses electricity. There's a lot of, there's good things to it, but there are definitely some downfalls to it as well. Wouldn't it be great if there was some sort of in-between? If we could have the portability and the transportability of using this in the field, but also having that high cell count that we really desire? This is where we come in. We've developed a new prototype called the inexpensive rate freezer. It requires no electricity, has the same high quality results, and it's fast and efficient. From looking at it, it's two styrofoam boxes and a piece of duct tape. That old adage of one man's trash is another man's treasure is perfectly what this describes. We've been able to figure out a way in order for this to work. And so with that, I kind of want to show you guys how it works. Woo! <laughs> so in these straws, they're preloaded with semen and a cryoprotectant. They're loaded into the bottom chamber of the device, and the top is securely closed. You pour in your liquid nitrogen, and 20 minutes later, the straw is frozen. The magic of this device is how it actually cools the straws at the appropriate time and speed in order for it to happen. It's pretty innovative. Why is this important? Why do we care so much about this? That right there is your answer. Putting more foals on the ground that have the genetics that we see valuable. But ultimately, it's great that we can do this. That's fabulous. But we have to determine whether or not our criteria for it to be working have been met. So in our lab, I do something called a post-loss semen analysis. I look at the alive versus dead ratios, the shape and concentration, in addition to the fertilization capacities. I use something called a computer-assisted semen analyzer, which allows me to look at the alive versus dead ratios, as well as the concentrations. This video gives you a prime example of what I look at day to day. The alive is, has the potential and is assumed to be able to fertilize. 
while the ones that are not moving still are assumed to have the potential to fertilize, but survival of the fittest comes into play. If you're not swimming, you're not going to make it to the egg. The second criteria is the shape. The diagram actually shows you what an ideal sperm cell will look like. That's what we're shooting for. The picture in the middle shows you what a morphology or a shape slide from one of our thaws using this device looks like. Pretty identical. It works out for what we expect. And the last picture, the one with the red circle up at the top, is the third and final criteria of what we expect to see. That little red circle up at the very top of it has something called an acrosomal cap inside. That cap is solely responsible for fertilization of an egg. Without it being there, you will not be able to fertilize, meaning ultimately, there's no foal on the ground. So why is this important? Why is cryopreservation within our industry something that we're striving for? Why does this device have the potential to change what we're doing? It's inexpensive. It uses very little liquid nitrogen. We're able to propagate the genetics, which otherwise would be here. The potential for shipping worldwide is now something that's available to us because of the fact that we can freeze it, when ultimately, as of right now, you really can't find a lot of people that will ship. It's inexpensive. You don't have electricity. To freeze without electricity and in the field is huge. This gives the people that don't have the resources to spend on that $22,000 freezer the capacity to do this in their own backyard with their own animals. It's a great thing. And while some people may not understand the whole, gene the whole mechanism of it, the fact that we can turn this device, which is some man's trash, into the ideal freezer for another man is awesome. Ultimately, at the end of the day, artificial reproductive technologies are consistently evolving. Whether it's taking something from your own backyard and expanding it to see what you could actually make it out of. Realistically, everyone's got an idea. You just have to run with it. This device is not only using, being used as horses, but we also are using it in other domestic species, as well as certain wildlife animals as well, and seeing comparable results. The fact that we have the potential to change the industry with just this sets a monumental standard, and we're simply taking it one stride at a time and putting one hoof in front of the other. And with that, that's our end goal. If we can put him on the ground, it's a good day. And I do need to thank the Office of Intellectual Property for allowing me to actually present this to you guys, because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't have ever known. Thank you.